This is a series of videos that covers a ride from Lake Atacama, Guatemala, to my favorite beach community, Lodo Marcos, in Mexico near Puerto Vallarta. Now, this 4,000 mile ride took about 12 days, and uh, in that amount of time, I covered some really beautiful places in southern Mexico and in Chiapas, met up with some really fantastic friends, got to experience some beauties that I never even thought existed, and ultimately arriving back in one of my favorite little beach towns, Lota Marcos, in the state of Nayarit. Something going on up here. And in Okosingo, Having themselves a little party here, roadblock style, which is pretty normal. Gracias, amigo. And looks like it's only going to get better up here. Usually people... People don't mind if you kind of make your way through. But like I made my way through. Thing is, it's always unclear why these roadblocks are in place. Definitely a lot going on with the elections and a lot of other stuff right now. But it seems like I made it through. Last time it was in a small town called Osocha. But now looks like they've moved it to Okosingo.
people here needing to get through. favorite going less than idle speed. Alright. Got through that somehow. Just saw a sign for Palenque and it said 80 kilometers, which is probably about 55 miles or so, right around there. <clears throat> Let's see, this is what I'm talking about. A lot of these roads, they just kind of fall apart, and then that creates like a one lane. So. Oftentimes you'll have people that kind of set up like a blockade there and they're asking for money because they're saying they're fixing the road when in fact they just hold up a rope just to try to what I like to call get a forced propina which is like a forced tip. Not a huge fan of that. Generally just try to ride through if I can. Oh this guy's big. So I've put about, about 25,000 miles on this DR, riding it through the US, Mexico, Guatemala, um, and I tried to set it up pretty well before I left. It's hard to know exactly what kind of setups you'll need, but, oh wow, yeah, there's another big spot that fell away. I can take a quick look at that. You see they put, put the little dirt topes here. But wow. Yeah, that's certainly falling away. Slippery. Hey, right. Um, what was I saying? Oh, the bike setup. So, number one thing that I really enjoyed was the suspension. So I went through Pro Cycle and I put on upgraded front um, shocks, front springs. And then the cogent, you can see them here, the cogent adjusters, those really helped out. Because now, when I'm going through stuff like this, and I want a little more stiffness, a little more rigidity, I can just let it out, and I'm good to go. So now in times like this where I'm on the road, I can tighten everything up, get it nice and tight, and uh, really helps me out with all the turns and everything, keep everything nice and tight. The front end feels really solid. 
Um, so suspension, definitely number one. Number two, a lot of people put on seats and stuff. I think I've taken that picture before actually. A lot of people put on a seat or something. I honestly haven't found a seat that's comfortable. So I just stuck with the stock seat, which is fine for me. To be quite honest, I, I try to stop and take photos or get some food, get a drink, like interact with some local something, get off the bike, move around. I'm also always moving and kind of like shaking my feet around, you know, try to keep the hips from getting too, too uh, locked up. I think it's really important to just keep moving on the bike. So I didn't get a seat. I'm just using the stock seat and it sucks a lot, but I don't care. Uh, what else? So this is a huge one. I put my F800 GSA bars here on this bike and I gotta be honest, it is fantastic to have these bars. I feel like, I feel a lot higher on the bike and then I also put in the, uh, the risers, so I get another two and a half, almost three inches, um, which is fantastic. That has really helped, I think, uh, cut down on some of the fatigue that I would normally get with this style of machine. Wow, this is beautiful. Some things that I did are uh, totally destroyed, like I put on these these hand grips, you can see they're, uh, they're gone, they're toast. And actually they've just turned into like gum. So whenever I touch them, they're like super sticky and gross. Ugh. It's kind of like just boogers, it just feels like boogers. But yeah, these need to be replaced, but I don't really care. It doesn't bother me too much. This thing, I think, they call it like a cramp buster or something. I wonder if I can get this guy. See this guy here? So, that guy has really helped. I had this on, these on my beamers and stuff as well. And really what it does is it reminds you to keep a loose hand. Because when you, when you have these like death grips all the time, you can start to get cramps. And if you're trying to do, you know, a 10, 12 hour day, Especially if you're off-road, you need to be practicing staying loose. What is this kid doing? So this is kind of the area where I would expect some crazy stuff. There's nothing out here, super remote. And the way they kind of set the trap. Oh good, got some trucks coming through. That's good. Makes me feel good. But the way they set the trap is they have some kind of blockade and then they come in from behind. So you're kind of like caught you know, in this net, basically. I always kind of said, if somebody's running up to me, I'll do whatever I can to just kind of avoid the situation. To include, if they're running at me, to hit them. And I don't think there'd be any mistake whether or not they were trying to be aggressive or whether they were like in trouble or needed help or something. At some of the at some of the uh, blocks I've come to, where they like hold the they hold the uh, what you call it across. All I've done is basically just stand up on my bike and speed up and they move. <laughs> they drop the ropes. So 
Let's see. Wow, it doesn't get much better than this. Temperature is really cool, although it's getting warmer. So I know I'm going down. Certainly uh, losing elevation here. But these roads are fantastic. There's pretty much zero traffic. Still have to be careful because there are big trucks that use this road. And they're still collectivos. But it's pretty awesome. This is one of my favorite roads. It's too bad that this is kind of a dangerous area. Oh, too good.
Hey guys, if you're still here, um, I'm really surprised. You're either an absolute rock star or just asleep, or maybe both, probably both. Um, but this pretty much wraps up the video. After you come out of the jungle and go through Palenque, there's not much more to show to get to Tulum. You go through Escarcega, and then these roads are like pin straight and they basically follow the coast and you're just followed by tour buses that zoom by you at like a hundred miles an hour and taxis that try to run you down and you're basically just riding on brand new roads to take tourists up to Cancun and Tulum and things like that and it's just really boring the only thing is it's like 900 billion degrees so not only is it boring but it's super super hot so didn't really turn on the sun too much. However, I did get to jam out some of my best, or my, excuse me, I did get to jam out to some of my favorite, favorite um, high school rap tunes like Biggie and Tupac and all those guys since I connected the uh, cell phone to my Senna. But anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know what you liked about the video, if you thought the roadblock was cool or maybe, um, if you've done some mods to your DR650, how you like those mods, but let me know what you think in the comments below. All right, guys, ADV on.